The NDEB has explained the NDECC blueprint. That's what we're going to discuss in this video. So let's get started. All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, it's Dr. Hafez from Scholars Dental. And this week, the second week of March, we have two update videos regarding the NDEB. We had a video uh, about the postponing of the NDECC exam until September. We discussed that. If you haven't seen that video, uh, look, check it out on our channel. And this video is going to be about the NDECC exam blueprint explained. Okay, that news was released on March 4th. 2022 and just today uh i know we found that they have released the actual protocol okay now the protocol we're not going to discuss that in this video um i'll show you how to find it it's something maybe you'll learn in the course you're taking and also if we do decide to go through it it will be a separate video because it'll just make this video too long so in this video we're going to talk about the news that was released on march 4th the and the blueprint explained so let's see what we could find out from this news Okay, so in 2022, the NDC will replace... Okay, they're just saying that they're replacing the ACS instead uh, with the uh, with the NDECC. And after they thought about it and consulted, and this is the best thing. Okay, so now introducing assessment of situational judgment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some notes. So blueprint explained. Just some points here, okay, for NDECC. All right. Now, the situational judgment, there are a lot of questions about that from and curiosity about what it is exactly. Um, a lot of people had their own you know, theories. It's going to be like the Australian exam. It's going to be like uh, the OSCE or the ACJ. So here, the professionals consultant practice analysis, okay. They need this component for the NDECC. It requires pro solving problems and work-related situations dealing with patient-centered care, professionalism, communication, collaboration, practice, information. Okay, these knowledge, skills, and abilities are not tested in the ACS. So they're not going to be anything to do with clinical, uh, you know, procedures. And they are not tested in the AFK or the ACJ. So you cannot say it's going to be like an ACJ question or an AFK question. Okay, now I did find situational judgment in parts of the world, like uh, I think in the UK they have a situational judgment. And I like the way that I found two sample questions and they are about these things they're saying. It's not, it's not a clinical case. They're not bringing you a photo to diagnose and pathology. They're not bringing you that. It's more of, you know, um, really like ethics, professionalism, communication, even things with staff, like any, anything there. So they might bring you a question now, how the question is going to be delivered to you, that's where it may be different in the Canadian system. But the knowledge about what to do, like how to, to deal with staff, how to be professional, how to deal with patients' concerns, right? Um, and how to be ethical. Th this kind of stuff, it's, the knowledge is, is usually similar, okay? So, again, in the protocol, they elaborate more about that. It could be someone, you know, uh, asking you the question or it could be a question on a computer and you have to type in the answer that's in the protocol i'm not going to go through that right now but no it's not like an acj or an afk it's not knowledge based it's more uh making sure or testing your your um your professional skills right now so let's take that note down here let's say situational judgment let's call it assessment of situational judgment maybe asj uh it's not knowledge based it's not like acj or afk and that way, I would say it's not really like OSCE, right? Not like OSCE. It's not about what to do in terms of how to treat a tooth or a condition. It's about how to properly and appropriately behave and deal with patients and staff. All right. So that's what they're going to be observing in this uh, assessment. Let's look at the other paragraph here, changing clinical requirements. So I like this part because we made some predictions before when we went through their one of their uh, when they first released the NDECC a while ago, and now they confirmed those things. So I'm I'm kind of glad that it was clear now that everybody knows what's included and not not included. So the original ACS had 12 projects. If you're aware of that, you know if you're in this uh, for a while, you know that, and they revised these. And okay, let's see. They did a survey for practicing dentists to see which ones are more important. 
and now the requirements that you need to do in the NDECC are less than the ACS and they could be done in a single day. So that's pretty good. Um, so pretty much you could look here and go the ACS requirements, the clinical projects will be done in one day, right? In a single day. Okay. So if you're familiar, what they did is the class three composite preparation, the full metal crown and the dental dam, rubber dam have been eliminated. And that's what we predicted before because they didn't include it in the other ones. So which projects are eliminated? So you could say no class three, no rubber dam and no full metal crown. Okay, so that takes us to nine projects. And out of those nine, you have infection control and record keeping. So really, now you have seven clinical projects, right? So let's see now what else we could get from this. So the purpose of the class three composite was to test minimal intervention. And now the class two amalgam preparation is kind of like the minimal intervention. Because the NDB no longer uses teeth with caries, the class 2 million preparation is minimal preparation on the tooth, uh, stock tooth. So, good. At least we now know no caries teeth. So, maybe no special Kilgore teeth. It's going to be mainly plastic teeth, which is a lot better in terms of practicing and financially. When you're, when you're practicing as well, you don't have to buy those expensive Kilgore teeth, right? So, that's... I think better. So, so far, if you notice, I'm going to kind of say here, okay, this is better, right? This is better in terms of making it easier to do this exam in practice. This is more convenient doing it in one day. Now, yes, you have the situational judgment, which is new. So we could put a question mark here based on, okay, how do we feel about that? But at least I'll probably take that trade off. Yeah, it's maybe new, but once we get used to it, it's probably a little bit more. Uh, it's going to be better in terms of doing that and, and giving the trade off of not needing to get those Kilgore teeth, maybe those extra projects that might make it easier now a bit, right? Okay, so let's look. Oops, I uh, got this here. Go back. Okay, I'm back here. Okay, so. The NDC includes one amalgam restoration. We know that. They already have the class two amalgam, class two amalgam restoration, and two composites, the class four and class two. That's always been there. So there's kind of justifying why, because in, it represents more how we actually practice in Canada, that we do more composites in general. So yes, that makes sense. And also uh, they leave the amalgam because it's it's always, you know, it's the basics of things that are taught in, in universities, and you may actually need to do it in clinics. So that's why they left amalgam. Okay, especially some some patients, it may be their first choice of treatment. Okay, as they mention here, but the composites are more because it reflects current practice in Canada. Now, the ACS included two crown preparations before the full metal was eliminated because it's rarely performed in practice today, and that's true. We rarely do that. Um, you know, I probably have done one or two of them, but mainly we all may, mostly do PFMs or full full ceramic. The NDC includes only one crown preparation, which will vary between now here. A metal ceramic crown preparation and an all ceramic crown. So that means they might have those two. Now they add, so they added now metal ceramic, PFM, and all ceramic. So we could kind of add here crown. You have PFM and all ceramic crown. Okay. <clears throat> and okay which means it's lithium disilicate or zirconia crown, right? Because the preparation for an all ceramic, whether zirconia, it may be very similar to the buckle part of the PFM anyway, right? So, I mean, in, you know, if you think about this, it might be even easier if you get an all ceramic because you just have to keep it, the margin the same all over. Uh, whereas in a PFM, you know, on the buckle, it's wider and then on the lingual you usually go thinner to, to uh, represent the metal margin, right? Um, the provisional restoration required is performed on the crown prep that you do. Okay, and that's what 
reflects what takes place in practice. That makes sense too, right? I think that's fair. So you now hear the thing. So uh, P, let's call it the provisional or the temporary crown is on your prep preparation, right? Now, some people look at this as, hey, this is not fair because if I mess up the crown, then I'm going to mess up the, the provisional. Then don't mess up the crown, right? So that's one thing. And the thing is, it's not that it's unfair. This is realistic. This is how it should be, right? Now, the other thing why I think it's better is that um, is when you before they used to bring you the prepared tooth and those pre-prepared teeth were pretty bad, right? So you didn't even have enough room to create a proper provisional. And a lot of times you might get like a hole in the crown. But if you if you try to fill it up, it'll cause hyper occlusion. And if you remove it, it'll be uh, like kind of a weak crown or, or sometimes even a void or a hole in the crown. So. So I like this because when you prepare it yourself, as long as you give yourself enough room that you're going to get a good provisional crown that has, you know, enough thickness that you don't have any bulb, you don't have any holes in it. And also, uh, and you know, won't, uh, it won't have hyper occlusion as well if you trim it down. So, and you have space to actually trim it down and fix the occlusion. So I think it's better. I know it was just easy to say, oh, don't mess up the crown, but this is better. If you if you do a, a crown and you have enough margin space, enough occlusal reduction, you're going to get a better provisional crown if you compare that to the pre-prepared. Because the pre-prepared, as I remember, were very thin, prep were very, was a very thin preparation and it made the provisional a little bit annoying to do. And this is more realistic. So it's fair and I think it's better. Okay, that's my opinion for this one. Um, Let's look here um, again. The dental dermocrine was eliminated because obviously dental assistants could do it. So why are they wasting time testing you? Um, so just because if someone else could do it, then maybe it's not something they want to test, right? So that's pretty much it for this one. Here's the summary. If you see uh, the ACJ, the ASJ is not like ACJ. It's not like AFK. It's going to be more focused on professionalism. The clinical projects could be done in one day which is good for you, better for you. No class three, no rubber dam, and no full metal crown. Um, now, pretty much seven clinical projects. You could probably add infection control record keeping. I'm not sure. We'll check that. No caries teeth, better for you, plastic teeth. PFM and ACs uh, and, and all ceramic crown. So now that's maybe an extra step that you have to learn. Provisional is on your own prep. I find that to be better because um, it'll give you more thickness for the crown and you know what you're dealing with. So that's pretty much it. Now here you can see you have the NDECC blueprint. If you click there, you'll get this page. And we've seen this page before, but you have these two parts. And this is what was uh, what I found released today, uh, March 7th. So click here and then you'll get this page. And this page, you can see it says protocol. Download the protocol. You click there and you'll get the protocol. So this protocol, I'm not going to go through the through it in this video, but it's kind of interesting to see. And of course, you'll study this when you take when you start preparing and taking the course. But you can see here they listed the seven projects, right, um, of the of the NDEC. So it looks looks a lot simpler now. So class two amalgam preparation, class two amalgam restoration, class two composite. Uh, let's go a little bit more. Class four composite crown prep, provisional, then endo access, and that's it. You know. It just feels less, right? Because they're not, obviously they're not mentioning the, they want you to follow infection control, right? And here's the situational judgment. They just mention, you know, the the uh, the topics again, right? <laughs> and then down here, they mention how it's delivered. So you could see there's going to be 10 stations. And pretty much if you look a little bit here, for each station, you'll be provided detailed instructions. Okay, and two minute provided to read this. The question you'll be notified when the exam period. Okay, um, I think. Oh, here it is actually above it. So you can see it says each station will assess your skills managing a dental practice uh, related scenario. Scenarios may be involve may may involve writing an answer. So you might actually end up just writing an answer, typing an answer, speaking with a standardized simulated patient or person, or looking at a video and or other related sources. So who knows how it's going to be and what they decide on, or is it going to be a mix of all of these? All stations will be video recorded. So they're going to record you and then assess it later on how you're, you're maybe uh, handling the situation. So 
you could see here this protocol i'm not going to go through it but you could see also i'm just scanning quickly the there's a pass and fail uh so passing is now competent or mi uh, minimally competent and failing is non-competent so this replaces the a plus a d and e scores right and then at the bottom of this document you'll see each project again so i'm not sure how this how what the difference is between this and the old one is it just an a plus and here's a and then this is e i'm not sure so i'll do that comparison and maybe discuss it in another video and again you'll learn these things with the course you're taking so that's this part and then you can see here this part here the the, the instruments and stuff uh you know it's the same page about the teeth but they don't have the detailed list of instruments that they're going to provide yet we'll be waiting and once that comes out we'll update you guys as well so that's pretty much it about the blueprint news and just a little scan of the protocol i won't count that if we want to do it we'll probably do a more detailed one in a separate video or again you'll learn it in your course and that's pretty much it we are planning on you know starting the ndec trying something online right now if anyone is interested you could consult with us and we'll show you what our plan is and also if you're starting this process for afk or acj and your and your figure and your goal is to become a dentist in canada and you're kind of just you know you're probably approved or you're you're sent your documents first recommendation is get yourself approved by the ndeb send in your documents and, and open an account and do the there's no reason not to do that if this is your goal because there's no expiry for your account once it's approved. Um, the five years starts after your ACJ passing, okay? And it doesn't matter if you're in your country or you're in Canada, but you're planning to do this, open an account, send your documents, get approved, and then the immigration could come later because you could always come for a visit, do the exam and go back, right? And you're still making progress in this, in this pathway. Um, and if you need any uh, help or discussion or you, you feel like you want someone to help you clarify the steps and clarify the options so that you could figure out where you are and how to, how to proceed, book our co a consultation with us. Go to our website. You could book it there or you could contact us at info at scholarsdental.com. So that's it. If you have any other ideas you think I missed, positive or negative, leave it in the comments so we could all learn from each other. Uh, thank you and all for, for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.